click the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to never miss another update. Prophet Musa went to the palace of Pharaoh at God's command to invite him to worship the one God. Pharaoh had summoned many wizards to show power to the palace. When the rod of Prophet Musa became a great snake and devoured all the wizard snakes, everyone was shocked. The magician bowed their head and said, We have believed in the god of Musa and Harun, and the courtiers and the people who came together to watch believe in the god of Musa. Strange chaos swept to the palace, and the news soon spread to the city. Unaware of what to do, Pharaoh shouted in distress, Kick everyone out of my palace! The next day, Pharaoh instructed some of his men in the city to proclaim that Musa is a great sorcerer who must be thrown out of Egypt, otherwise he will be tormented by the idols all his life. Because of this, many people remain pagan. When the idolaters rejected Prophet Musa's invitation, God sent down upon them a disastrous drought. The Nile River dried up. Not a single drop of rain came. Whatever idolaters sacrificed were made to the idols came to no avail. The magic of the magicians and wizards were also ineffective. People began to ask help from Prophet Musa, as water shortage was so severe that people could not feed their animals. Prophet Musa said to them, If you repent and believe in God, he will help you. People agreed. Prophet Musa asked God to eliminate the drought. Prophet Musa's prayer was answered. It rained and the Nile River was full again. But the people forgot their promise and ridiculed Prophet Musa. It was rumored that the drought would due to Prophet Musa. They continued their idolatry and Pharaoh continued his oppression. Some time later, God sent another punishment. This time, a huge storm descended from the sky. The storm swept through the trees and slammed into the city walls. This disaster destroyed the gardens and dried the fields. The storm was so powerful that it destroyed some of the houses and took the roof of the warehouses, destroying whatever people had stored in the warehouses. Pharaoh mobilized his men to help the people and prevent the houses and warehouses from being destroyed, but that was not possible. When the people saw that the Pharaoh could do nothing, they thought of Prophet Musa again and turned to him. Prophet Musa again asked God to help the people. Prophet Musa set a time, and at that moment the storm finished and everything calmed down. People were happy and would build their homes and warehouses. It took a long time for people to rebuild their fields and gardens. During this time, they again forgot Prophet Musa and resumed idolatry. The following year, when the farmers went to the fields to harvest their crops, they suddenly saw a huge black cloud approaching their fields. Everyone was worried. At first, they thought it was a storm, and they told themselves if there was a storm, it would not be a concern, because this time, we have tightened our warehouses, we have already hidden many of our products in underground warehouses. But soon they saw thousands upon thousands of locusts invading their fields. The locusts not only hid the crops, but also destroyed their grains in the warehouses. Nobody could do anything. At last, they turned to Prophet Musa and said with tears in their eyes, Brother Musa, all our food was eaten by locusts. We promised to stop worshipping idols. Prophet Musa said, I know you well, and I know you will return to your ugly deeds, but I will ask God for help again. Soon the Lord answered the prayer of Prophet Musa. The next day, when people woke up, there were no more locusts. The people were happy and satisfied, and they renovated their fields and gardens and worked hard. The following year, at the time of the harvest, Prophet Musa asked the people to stop worshipping idols and worship God. Again, the people laughed at him and said, What do you mean? Are you kidding? The grasshoppers were not unhappy with us. They had just lost their way. Prophet Musa was sad and left. But a few days later, one of the elders of the city tried to draw water from a well. He saw that the water was full of frogs. The man and his friends laughed. The man threw out the frogs and threw the bucket into the well again. Again, it was full of frogs. They dumped the water, but when the third time the bucket was full of frogs, everyone was worried. They went over to the other wells and saw that the rest of the people had gathered and looked anxiously into their wells. The streams were also full of frogs. Throughout Egypt, there was no streams, wells and rivers that did not contain frogs and tadpoles. People didn't know what to do. They were thinking of getting help from Prophet Musa again, but one of them said, why should we get help from Musa? We should get help from the Pharaoh. At the same time, the Pharaoh's nose started bleeding. Whatever the doctors did, they couldn't stop the bleeding. Then, the Nile had become blood-colored. Seeing this scene, everyone shouted in fear. They ran to the town square and shouted, Blood! The Nile River is full of blood! Pharaoh came to the river to see everything with his own eyes. Pharaoh dipped his hand in the Nile River, grabbed a handful of it and smelled it. It smelled like blood. He poured the blood into the river and said to himself, O oh Musa, truly your God is mighty and great, but I will not give up. Then he stood and shouted, Go to the idols and prostrate before them. 
one shouted, We have assigned a hundred people to worship idols day and night just to eliminate the disaster of the frogs. What else should we do? People thought that the last and greatest savior, as always, was Prophet Musa. So they went around the city and went to the house of Prophet Musa. Prophet Musa was drawing clean and clear water for his sheep. Everyone was stunned. Everyone was crying and watching Prophet Musa eagerly. Prophet Musa came before them and said, What is the matter again? One of them shouted, O oh, Prophet, you have truly come from the great God. I swear to you, God, that we will not return to idolatry. After him, everyone shouted, I swear to you, God, that we have believed. He said, If you truly believe, Pharaoh will kill you. You have to build your house right here in this corner of the city and next to each other so that you can learn from each other and help each other out. A few days later, the river became clear. All the believers built their houses next to the house of Prophet Musa on the outskirts of the city. Pharaoh, frightened by this, came up with a solution. Many people were unemployed at that time and had lost their flocks and hares because of the disasters they had suffered. Pharaoh, together with his advisors, decided to take this opportunity. He said, I want to build the largest tower in the universe and go alone and fight with the god of Musa. Pharaoh employed 50,000 architects and hired tens of thousands of workers. Construction of the tower began and took years. Several people died while building the tower. Finally, the tower was built. The tower was very large. The day of the tower's inauguration came. Pharaoh climbed the stairs of the tower with horses. Several people and troops accompanied him. When they reached the top of the tower, Pharaoh shot an arrow from his bow into the sky. At the same time, a crow was flying around. The arrow hit the corner of its foot, but the crow freed itself of the arrow, and the arrow fell again to Pharaoh's feet. Pharaoh happily picked up the arrow and saw the blood on it. I killed him, he shouted. I killed the god of Musa. Everyone rejoiced as they saw the bloody arrow and came down from the tower. The news quickly spread around the city. Some people believed the story, but the companions of Prophet Musa laughed at the news and did not give up their faith. However, the tower had become the symbol of Pharaoh's power, and people from other lands came to see the tower. Everything changed in the middle of a stormy night. A huge thunderstorm descended from the sky and went around the tower and encircled it. The guards of the tower alerted Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh shouted, Oh Musa, if the tower breaks down, I'll kill you and your companions. God commanded Prophet Musa to leave Egypt at night. Prophet Musa quickly informed everyone, and Prophet Musa's companions and their families left their homes and departed from the city. The tower was demolished with a startling sound. Pharaoh, who saw everything closely, cried out, We are attacking Musa and his people. But Pharaoh and his troops were very far away from Prophet Musa and his companions. 